I don't think it's every day that a 29-year-old gets congestive heart failure. We didn't know at that moment how serious it was. They were saying that her heart was barely beating. It's crazy to think that your heart could just stop and then you're lifeless. She had been telling me how she was sick in Oklahoma and she would go to the doctor and they were treating her for bronchitis. She was having a very difficult time breathing at night. You could tell that she didn't rest and that she was just gasping for air. My mom is actually the one that told me to go to Memorial Hermann Southeast because, you know, we know people there, we know the doctors are good there, and that's where I saw Dr. Gupta. He came into my room, told me everything, you know, you have congestive heart failure, and was explaining how, you know, my heart's not beating like a normal heart should. It scared me, you know, it was like I lost my dad at a young age, and uh, I didn't want my son to lose his mom. Well, I first met Erica when Dr. Gupta, a lung doctor, saw her for the first time. So he actually called me and sent her directly to my office in, this, in the same day. And as soon as I saw her and examined her, I realized that her heart muscle was very weak and made her short of breath. And then immediately we admitted her to the hospital. It's heart-wrenching, you know, especially she just had a child. She was here for the holidays visiting, and it was scary because I knew the reality that if she didn't get better with the medications that I gave, then we would probably have to place an artificial heart and move towards heart transplantation. I was actually laying in bed, and everybody had left. It was just me and my husband. I started feeling a tingling, like it was almost like my foot was asleep. And then it just started hurting. She was on blood thinners in the ICU, and uh, around midnight or one o'clock, she developed pain in her foot. They evaluated the patient and called me uh, right away. When we saw her heart on ultrasound, we saw the heart muscle was very weak, but there was also a large blood clot inside the heart. So when I went into ICU and everybody was there, like the nurse was telling me everything that they were gonna do, it just, it scared me. We needed an operation for the blood flow to be restored, but the complicating factor was her weak heart. This operation is typically done with patients completely asleep with general anesthesia, but her heart was too weak and because of her congestive heart failure, we had to do this while she was awake, but she was completely aware and actually every step we were talking through it. I made an incision in just below her knee, exposed the vessels and pulled all the clot out and then uh, restored the blood flow and confirmed it with the angiogram. Dr. Saqib, that night his wife just had twins. But when we had this emergency and we needed help, he immediately picked up the phone and, and came into the hospital and, and helped, even though his own kids were in the ICU. I was with my wife uh, at the bedside of our newly born uh, twins in the neonatal ICU. Um, they both were in life support. Well, I identified myself with, with being a new parent and seeing Erica, her husband, and, and knowing that she just had a, had a baby. When I had heard that, I was just like, what? Like, I didn't realize how much doctors cared, you know? Like, left his babies to come do this. It shows how much they care about others, not just themselves or just their family. They care about other people, too. The ICU nurses are, are very well trained. They were really there emotionally supporting her and her family. There's just something about Penny. She was wonderful, you know, she just, she took care of Erica. She was brought to my room that I was in charge of that night. She came to me crying in pain, scared, and I just wanted to comfort her and make her, you know, know that we were gonna do everything we could to make sure that she was okay. I mean, it was just like we just connected, you know? We just started talking and, you know, she was talking about her life and I was talking about mine. And I found out that her son was about to turn one. All I could think was, there's no way that this young mom can miss out on her son's first birthday. I went into the mode of, I gotta fix this, I gotta make sure that she can be there and be a part of it. It was the day of, 
and she brought a gift for him. I told him that Mickey Mouse, you know, he loves Mickey Mouse. And I rolled her in at the same time and told her, surprise, you know, we're gonna have his birthday party here for you so that you can spend it with him. And she was so excited. Oh, that is adorable. I know. Oh, you did so good. Thank I you know. so much. Oh, no. <laughs> and yet the best smile. Yeah. It was just one of those moments like, wow blows your mind of how sincere people can really be. It's just who I am and, you know, what I want my family to be treated like is how I would treat my, my patients. She knew how important it was. It just touched my heart. Every person is different and we have to individualize our care. Just to allowing her to have her son's first birthday party really made a big difference in her spirits and I think it made her heart stronger. The doctors gave me hope the whole time that, you know, it will get stronger, it's gonna get better, you know, you're not gonna be sick your whole life, it will get better. It was very severe when she came into the hospital. It's improving slowly and uh, clinically she looks great. One of the newest materials that we have is called a life fest. And at any time she has this fast heart rhythm, it would catch it and it would give her a life-saving shock. She seems to be back to her normal life now, back to taking care of her baby and being a mom. Thank you for keeping me here, keeping me alive. And, you know, it reminds you that there are still caring people in the world, you know, that really care about others and just, you know, will do anything for the other person.